Titration. Titration is a technique that we use in the lab and it's basically used to determine the concentration of a either an acid or a base. It requires a few uh, pieces of equipment, a burette, a burette stand and clamp, an Erlenmeyer flask, some solutions and an indicator. A burette is a long graduated tube. Uh, you can have 25 mils or 50 mils and each milliliter is basically marked off. It has a stopcock at the bottom which basically works like a tap. Right now this stopcock is open so it, you would allow full flow of liquid out. And basically this is, uh, this is the setup for your experiment. So you add a solution to the burette and it's called a titrant. This is usually standardized solution. A standardized solution is a solution that you know the concentration of. So in your Erlenmeyer flask you add a volume, a known volume, to it and you add some water. The water is added basically so you can see the end point easier. It's not, it doesn't actually have to be measured. You add a couple of drops of indicator to the solution in your flask and basically an indicator is going to change color as the solution in the flask changes pH. And it's really important to pick an appropriate indicator and it depends on the strength of the acid base that you use. Phenolphthalein is fine for a strong acid, strong base titration. So it will turn, as soon as it turns slightly pink, very faint pink for about 20 seconds, you're at your end point. What's an end point? An end point is the point at which you stop titrating. It's a color change that you see to tell you you're done, don't go any further. And ideally, the endpoint is equal to the equivalence point. The equivalence point is where stoichiometrically the moles of acid equals the moles of base. So you've neutralized your solution in your Erlenmeyer flask. Now, when it comes down to calculating, you know the concentration in your burette, you know the volume that you added, so you can find moles. Use your mole ratio from your balanced chemical equation to figure out the moles of your substance in your flask. You know the volume that you added initially to your flask before you added the water. So you know volume, moles, you can figure out concentration. So this is basically an observation table that you would do in an experiment. You should always have an initial appearance of your acid, usually it's clear colorless liquid, and initial appearance of your base, clear colorless liquid, and that is so that you can identify an endpoint because it is no longer the same color. So we always put the final volume above the initial volume because a burette starts at zero at the top and it goes down to 50. So by putting the final volume first, then your initial volume, it makes the subtraction easier. So we know the difference here is 45.80. We added 45.80 milliliters. Usually you do three trials and you record the color of your endpoint. So later when you do your calculations, if you had bright pink, you'd know you've overrun your endpoint and it's not a good one to use. So then you would calculate the average of the concentration that you would get from trial two and three. We do our titrations in triplicate so that our act our uh, accuracy of our answer is higher, so we take an average of our results. The equivalence point for a strong acid, strong base is at pH 7. 
because it's neutral. However, if you titrate a weak acid with a strong base or a weak base with a strong acid, the pH at the equivalence points are quite different. And it's based on the fact, uh, not the fact, it's based on the type of salt that you have formed. If it contains the conjugate acid of a weak base, it's going to be acidic. If it contains the conjugate base of a weak acid, it's going to be basic. Strong acid base titration curve. Some titrations can be done and recorded electronically, but this is basically what happens. You, as you add, so basically this is a uh, base in the burette is being added to a flask containing an acid. So as you increase the volume of base added, you're approaching your equivalence point. And you can see there's a sharp, a very sharp incline here. So basically it's a gradual approach and then it goes straight up, which means half a drop of base can put you over your endpoint and you'll end up overrunning. So you have to be very close when you get close to your endpoint. And you'll notice because the pink color starts lasting a few more seconds. And then weak acid, strong base titration curve, and a weak base strong acid titration curve. So they look fairly similar. So they're both S curves, but you can see that the pH, the equivalence point, is not uh, it's not pH seven. I highly recommend that you watch a video on YouTube. There's many of them. Uh, about running a titration before you actually run a titration. So you pick up a little bit on technique because there's a lot of technique involved. But now we're going to move to another video where I discuss how to do your calculations.